changed his name to Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter said, I'm not going to take what Peter says. Well, the Lord named him. Yeah. And he called him. I believe we ought to listen to him, don't you? Amen. Some people say, so I'll take what Jesus said. I'm not going to take what Peter yeah. said. I've had people tell me, I had a young man tell me one time, he said he wasn't going to take what, what uh, Peter said. He was going to take what Paul said. Well, I said, brother, you can't take one without the other. Right. You've got to take it all. Amen. But he said, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, talking about this revelation, yeah. He said, I, he said, I will build my church. How many churches? One church. One church. And he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, this, God's got a church tonight. The devil's not going to prevail against it. Now, this is what I want you to see tonight. Remember, we're talking about the kingdom. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. Thank God. John came preaching the kingdom. He said, he disciples preaching the kingdom. And here's what the Lord told him. And he said, I will give unto thee. He was talking to Peter. He said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. In other words, I know people today, they've got all the cartoons, they see things on television. They always see uh, the gold pearl gates up there. The other people are standing up there with a the big key ring, thank God. Well, that ain't the way it is, children, thank God. The, key, the door is Jesus Christ. And if you're going to get in that kingdom, you need to get in now. And you need to obey what Peter said. That's what the keys was. God gave him the keys of knowledge and told him, thank God, to open the door up for the people so people could get in. I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Well, when the day of Pentecost came, thank God, and the Holy Ghost came like a mighty rushing wind, which preacher got up and preached the message? Why do you think? He had the keys. God told him to do it. He told him first. When the Gentiles had to hear the word of the salvation in the 10th chapter of Acts, who preached the message? Who had to carry the message there? Who called him to go there? The angel of the Lord. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Now, go with me, thank God, today. Amen. We're going to go. He said here, he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall bound, be bound in heaven. What do you mean, whatever you bind on earth? Whatever he preaches to the people. When he preached to the word of God to people, people are bound to obey that word. I mean, say amen. When my daddy used to tell me to do something, I, I knew he meant what he said. Thank God. And I was, I was going to suffer the consequences, Brother Johnny, if I didn't do what he told me to do. Thank God. I mean, he wasn't a very big man, but I'll tell you what, his words was mighty. Thank God. And that's just what, that's where the Lord is. He gave Peter the strength. He gave him the courage. He called him. He said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Now you take these keys and you go open the door up for the rest of the church. All right? I mean, say amen. amen. Whatever you loose on earth, it's going to be loose in heaven. Amen. Whatever you bind on earth, it's going to be bound in heaven. In other words, I'm giving you the keys. All right. Go with me today. Thank God. Acts chapter 1. I'm taking my time here this evening. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. I just got a few scriptures here tonight. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Sorry about that. Two, chapter 2, verse 14. Now, I just talked about this, but I'm going to read it. Amen. When the Holy Ghost came, and I'm going to I'm going to start here in 12, verse 12, and he said, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? And others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. There's what I want you to see, verse 14. But Peter, who? Peter. Everybody. Peter. Peter. Standing up with the eleven. In other words, the other was with him. Thank God they was backing him up. The other eleven lifted up his voice 
and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. Do you know why he got up and preached that day? He had the keys to the kingdom. And as he went on down through there, and they began to ask him and question on what he told them to do, and he told them, he said, he said, they said, what shall we do? And Peter, let's jump on right down to the to the thirtieth, uh, thirty eighth chapter. <coughs> this is the keys to the kingdom. Thirty eighth verse. verse. I'm sorry. Kind of rough shot here, my voice tonight. I'm going to start at 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then said Peter unto them, Repent. That's the first thing you've got to do. Amen. And be baptized, every one of you, some of you, Amen. every one of you, in the what? Name, Name of Jesus Christ. Is that what his name is? Mm -hmm. Okay. For what? Remission. remission of sins. So what's baptism for? Remission. For the remission of sins. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And he said, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. First, he, that's why it was the keys. Thank God Peter began to preach to him. And he said, For the promises to you and to your children, to all that are far off, and even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Thank God that was the keys to the kingdom. Thank God. Well, let's, we can jump on over here. Thank God. Go with me. Thank God to the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. Now, when we read here in the 2nd chapter of Acts, we read how that the, the Jews got into the church. That's when the door was opened up for the whole church, Sister Darlene. Thank God. But now, when we get over here in the 10th chapter, there wasn't no Gentiles in here. You can even read in the Bible when Jesus told his disciples, he said, don't go, thank God, down by the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to, just to go to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel because the door hadn't been opened to them. God had to go to his people first. Even Apostle Paul, when he went to churches, it shows, thank God, that he always went to the Jew first and when they turned him away, then he would go to the Gentile. But thank God, God had to open up the door for the Gentile just like he did the Jew. But who had the keys of the kingdom? Brother Peter, all right. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. I'm going to read down through 6. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band that called the Italian band. In other words, he wasn't a Jew. He was, he was of an Italian band. He was in a Gentile band. He was a what? A devout man. He was a good man, wasn't he? And one that feared God. He feared God with all of his house. And he gave much alms to the people and he prayed to God sometimes. Oh, Always. Always. He was a good man. But you know what? He wasn't saved. Right. He still needed to have the door opened up. Mm -hmm. And he saw in a vision. Man, I love to think about this man was so, so good of a man that he prayed an angel right down into his house. And he said, I saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour, at three o'clock in the afternoon of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before of God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall what? Tell thee what thou ought us to do. How come the angel couldn't tell him? How come the people down the road couldn't tell him? Thank God, that's because Peter was the one who had the keys. He had to open the door. There's a lot of people today that takes it upon themselves to tell people what they need to do, but can we back it up by the word of God? Brother Peter can back up what he said. Now, we're going to talk, we're going to go over to the next chapter. Thank God, and we can find out how that when they, the, the Gentiles, when they received the word, they got the Holy Ghost, thank God, just like they did on the day of Pentecost. But when Peter went back to the Jews, 
Thank God to his brethren. Sometimes they didn't want him to have nothing to do with him because he went in there with the Gentiles. Thank God. But you know, if God tells us to do something, we can't listen to what people tell us. We've got to do what God tells us. Amen. Now listen. Verse 1. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. See, we just read about that here in the 10th chapter. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision, talking about his Jewish brethren, contended with him. In other words, they argued with him, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. And Peter rehearsed, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying. And in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descent, as it had been a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even unto me. Upon the which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered, and I saw four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, unto me, Arise, Peter. Slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times. And all, were, and all were drawn up again to heaven. Now if you read the 10th chapter of Acts here, you can read the very evident this happened, thank God. Because 11th chapter, he's rehearsing it. In the 10th chapter, it happened. And behold, he said, this is Peter speaking, and behold, verse 11, and behold, immediately, there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea to me. In other words, God told him, Cornelius, he said, go get Peter, thank God, and he'll tell you what you need to do. Thank God, and they did, and he did that very thing. And while he's in there, I was, he's laying there, he said, there's a knock on the gate. They was there knocking at the door. And the Spirit bid me go with them. God bid him to go with them. Doubt it, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he showed us how that he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee what words, words whereby thou and all thy house shall what? He said. By the word, thank God. He had the message. He had the key. And listen what, and here, listen what he said. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us in the beginning. How did it fall on the church in the beginning? He said a mighty rushing wind come in. And it filled all, all the house where they were sitting. And it was all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit gave utter and thank God. And if you go back up here in the 10th chapter. Thank God in the 44th verse. Back up with me. Here, back to the 10th chapter. And verse 44. And he said, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. And that was talking about them six brethren that went with him. As many as came from Peter, came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here's how they knew. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Now listen, they can't leave out the rest of it because he said, can any man forbid water? Peter answered and he said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the what? Amen. What is the name of the Lord? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. That's just what I'm saying. Now let's jump back over here to the 11th chapter. In the verse 15, I'll read this again. And, he's, and, and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them 
as on us in the beginning. See, we just read how the Holy Ghost fell and they all began to witness and speak in tongues. Just like on the day of Pentecost, they witnessed and speak in tongues. Somebody sent me a message this week, thank God, and wants some scriptures on people getting the Holy Ghost. They got the word, how they knew they got it. Well, that's how I knew I got it. Amen. It's because when I got to witness, I spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave that. And say, God, that's what we've got to re believe in. We've got to believe it in the Word. If you're seeking the Holy Ghost tonight and you haven't received it, start believing it. It's for us tonight. It was for the Jews. It was for the Gentiles. Let's read a little farther. Then remember, now I'm in mean verse 15. And, and he said, And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as us on the, in the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, that how that John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's what he was pretty well, I knew how to preach about the Holy Ghost then, didn't he? Mm -hmm. For as much then as God gave them like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? And when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. I'll tell you what, I know, thank God, that God's granted me repentance. I'm glad, how many glad tonight that God's granted unto you the gift of repentance, thank God, being able to be forgiven of your sins, thank God. All right. One more place tonight. Amen. And you say, well, how did you know that's what that was talking about? Well, because I'm just reading it right here out of the book. Acts chapter 15, verse 7 and 8. Now they came to get all the elders, they come together to consider matters that was going on in the church. And Peter reminded them, thank God, that he was the one that was chosen to do that, to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Yeah. And I just read it to you. He had the keys to the kingdom. I got it right. We got it back here on the banner on the wall, Acts 2 38. That's the keys to the kingdom. That's how to get in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Peter, that was the message he preached. And when he even told us in the book of Luke, he said that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Where did it begin at? Where, where did it start at? In Jerusalem, thank God, Peter was the one that he would preach the first message. Thank God, that's just like me. When I first came to church, I didn't have no authority. But after, thank God, it was preached to me. Thank God, and it was delivered to me. Amen. Then God gave me the authority to preach it. And they'd say, well, how do you have it? I've read it right out of the book. Thank God, what I've read tonight, it's out of God's Word. But listen to what Peter said. Verse chapter 15, verse 7. <clears throat> I'm going to start verse 6. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, you mean as arguing? Yeah, there was. They didn't agree. That's why they came together to consider things. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord wants us to, to reason among with one another. Thank God. Not fighting. I'm talking about fighting and arguing. I'm talking about reason. He said, but there was disputing. And Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us. Now the choice that he made was he chose Peter first. That the Gentiles by what? My mouth, My mouth should what? Hear the, Hear the word of the gospel and believe. Thank God. And God which know the hearts of them Know the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. In other words, they got the Holy Ghost the same way, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And Peter is reminding them, thank God, that I, the God made choice among us. Thank God. He chose me, thank God, that I had to go and do it. Just anybody didn't have the message, Brother Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Brother Peter had the message. God chose him. God appointed him and gave him direction and told him what to go. Thank God there's a lot of people today that's going, but God's not giving them the direction. Thank God. This is the direction. This is the plan. This is the pattern. Thank God this is the keys to get in tonight. Thank God. And this never changed. Thank God. And, and I know, thank God, one place. Well, let's read one more place. Go to the 19th chapter. 
This is how they got it in the Bible. The book of Acts means the actions of the apostles. It's how the church started. It's our church. It's only history book we got in the New Testament. Now Paul and it came to pass 19 and 1, Acts 19 and 1. He said, and it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain what? What's, the, what's that mean? Followers. Followers. So they believers, wasn't they? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You ask people that today, or they get upset with you. Yep. You say, You have the Holy Ghost? You know, people say, Well, I got the Holy Ghost when I repented. It just came right in. Amen. Some people say, well, I will up and shook the preacher's hand and, and that's the entered in me. There, no, there ain't no scripture for that. We got a lot to go by the key. We got to go by the door. But he said, he asked him, even though they believed believer, he asked him, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, and to what then were you baptized? In other words, how was you baptized? Yeah. Must make a difference, don't you? Right. Yeah, you haven't got the Holy Ghost. Well, there's a reason why. Have you been baptized? Do you know anything about baptism? And they said, they said unto John's baptism. But he went on to tell them. They got a lot of people know about John. They know about the beginning. They know about the Gospels, but to go farther and learn more about God, thank God they haven't done that. Amen. It's preachers' faults a lot because they've stood in people's way and people don't know what the way is. Thank God everybody wants you to look at them. I don't want nobody to look at me. I want you to look at the Lord. Thank God because I, there's going to be a day, like John said, I'm going to decrease, but he's going to increase. Thank God. I want to point people to the Lord. If you put your confidence and your direction in the Word of God tonight and you can stand on it and prove it, you're never going to fall. You're going to be able to stand. But if we put our trust in men, thank God we can fall by the wayside. Alright. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which come on him, which is on who? Christ, I'm sorry. Christ Came after him, which is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they confessed the Lord. Why'd they get baptized? Because their sins need remitted. Because that was the keys of the kingdom. He said, and when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now look out now. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they what? Spake with tongues, Spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. That's how that was the witness of that. Right. This is the book of Acts. This is what we got to go. Thank God. And then I, I've heard people say, you know, just, just give your hand to the preacher and just repeat after me that you received the Lord into your heart. Thank God. But you know what? There's a plan, Sister Darlene. You've got to repent of your sins. I believe the sister said, thank God you're going to do a 180. Thank God. When God gives in your life, you're going to go, you're going to do a complete turnaround. Right. Amen. And, there, and there's still things that God's revealing to me. It's a Jenny's word. And we've got to walk in and thank God. You're going to do, there's going to be a change because when you're born again, that means you change from the way you was to the new creature. Thank God. Not born after corruptible things, but after the word of God. God's word is what changes us. You know, the, how many believe the word of God is a seed of God? The word spoke into the womb of Mary became the Son of God. How many believe that? Amen. That word, when it was spoken, said the Holy Ghost moved and overshadowed Mary, yep. and it spoke the word right into her womb. And her egg wrapped right around that seed, thank God, which was the word of God. And it grew inside her, thank God, and he was the Son of Man. He was the Son of God. He was the flesh, but he was spirit, thank God. And when she born him into this world, that was where he, he became the Son of God. Amen. When he was born, thank God, he was the Son of God. It was God manifesting in the flesh. 
God from a spirit born into the world. And you know what he done? He came here and reconciled us unto him. He came here and took up on our sin and took up on our nature. Thank God. And overcome sin in the flesh. Even to the death of the cross, he overcome it, thank God. And he made a way for me and you and made us to have access to the spirit, thank God, by dying to death, thank God. Just like we got right here. And he hit Peter. He said, now I'm going to give you the keys to it. I'm going to give you the keys to it. Now, Peter's long and gone. Who's got the keys now? The church. It was handed down to the church. Amen. We we started on this building right here, Brother Don. Brother Don's been here longer than all of us. Amen. But when we started building the church, amen, we finally got everything up. We got the keys and everything on the do locks of them, the doors, and everything got ready to have church, thank God. Somebody had to have the keys, didn't they? Somebody had to be in charge. Thank God somebody had to have a way to get in. Thank God and keep the charge of the house of God while it's in it. Today, thank God, God still got men that's in charge. Thank God. Bearing the key. But I'll tell you, their men are commended before God. Thank God. And they're going to be responsible. Amen. I'm responsible for all that happens inside the church. As long as I'm here. As long as I'm the pastor. Thank God. I'm the one responsible. Thank God. That's what gives me my authority. That's what's in this book. Amen. Can I preach to you that you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Yes, I can. Because it was in here. I've, there's been a lot of people that's been baptized. I remember my old pastor, Brother Bishop, thank God. He's, when he first repented of his sins, he was a wicked man, Brother Johnny. And he said he, he waited and he sought feet across the cornfield to get baptized. He said, he, he said, but when he had to ask him later how he got baptized, he said, I, didn't, I don't know. All I know is I got baptized. All I know is I felt God and I got delivered and I got baptized. But he said, but as I went on, I began to realize that there was a way to get baptized. I mean, to do it the way the Bible said. And we've had many people, thank God, at the time that's got baptized the wrong way, but we got to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Traditionally, People baptize in the titles. Yep. They'll say, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. There's nowhere in the Bible they were baptized like that. Amen. Matthew 28, 19. Mm -hmm. they got, that's where it's quoted. But Matthew was writing that it's supposed to be in the name of Amen. the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. The word of is a preposition. It means belong to, or proceed from. The name belonging to the Father. The name belonging to the Son. Amen. There's only one. What is His name? Jesus Christ. Amen. What did the Bible say? Isaiah said He'd be called Wonderful. Yeah. Counselor. Is that His name? The Mighty God. No, His name was Jesus Christ. The angel said, His name shall be called Jesus. And He shall save His people. And when we get on, as we go through the Word, when Peter baptized, how he baptized? Jesus Christ. Amen. In the, in the book that we just read there in Corinthians, he said, God, how do you get baptized? Or not Corinthians, but we're talking about Cornelius. Everybody's reading about him. Now they get baptized. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everywhere in here. But when Paul baptized him, he baptized him in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Isn't it mysterious? In the world that we live in, people does everything in every name under the sun. But when they comes to have to do it in the name of Jesus Christ, they get upset. Right. I remember, I can't remember which one of the presidents, well I do, amen, that, that came up for his inauguration and there was a big thing going on whether they could say the name of Jesus or not in his prayer. I said, well, I, it don't make a difference in what he prays. If he don't use the Lord's name, he will do no good anyhow. He said, for whatsoever you do, do in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. What is his name? Thank God. Amen. If we go, think, if we can get, if we go to the supper table and we say, I pray and ask God to bless his food in the name of Jesus Christ. People go out and play ball games and they'll have prayer. They'll do, and they'll say, we end this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. But then when they get down to the water, they say, no, let's use Father. Let's use Son. Let's use Tyler. You know why? Because it's tradition. It's handed down. Mm -hmm. Where did that tradition come from? It came from the Catholic Church. Yeah. That was the first place it was ever used. It was in the Catholic Church. Catholic mm -hmm. Church used that mode of baptism. Mm -hmm. 
And when it, even when your the, the, your people came out, when you had they got the Protestant movement that came out of the Catholic Church, they never questioned it that they brought that baptismal formula right out with them. But if you look in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible did anybody ever get baptized in any time. Never got baptized. Nowhere in here. If anybody showed me, I'll, I'll let them take me and baptize me. But it's not in here. Brother Jeremy, there's only one way. He said, the Bible said there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Amen. How many loves the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Thank God for everybody that's here tonight. Thank God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. I'm, I'm sad for the ones that's not here. Thank God. We love all of you. Thank God one of us out there on, on, the, on the internet with us this evening. Thank God. And we thank the Lord for the ones that's doing well. I believe it would be good if we'd all stand. Amen.